The Seattle Seahawks have their season on the line this Sunday against the LA Rams. What's going on, everybody? Good morning. We have made it to Saturday. A lot of good college football today. And tomorrow, there will be another day of NFL games. And that day of NFL games includes the Seattle Seahawks, for the second time in three weeks, I would say, are putting their season on the line. Uh, this video is being powered by BetUS. We'll talk more about them later. But I want to get into this game a little bit first because, look, obviously, it's a game of NFL football. So we're going to talk about the stuff we usually talk about, players, X's and O's, talent, skill, formation, scheme, and I'm not saying any of that stuff doesn't matter or matters significantly less in this game, but I'm just going to go ahead and say it. If the Seahawks want to win this game, it's going to go beyond all that stuff because in terms of the players and the scheme, and just the general execution of what they're supposed to be doing versus what they've been doing, that's not going to be enough. So we can spend time talking about that. We can talk about matchups. We can talk about all that stuff. But if you want to win this game as a member of the Seahawks team or as a fan of the Seahawks or whatever, whatever relationship you have with the team to win this game, you're going to need something beyond that. You're going to need... I don't know exactly what you would call it. Is it heart? Is it desperation? Is it urgency? You need to want it more than the other side. And that desire needs to show up somewhere on the field in a way that can't totally be explained, right? Like on paper, something that isn't supposed to be able to happen happens because you want it more because you realize the stakes and you're trying to keep your season alive. And you have to do that knowing that the other team is probably looking at this game similarly. They're probably also sitting there thinking, look, we uh, we need this game or else our season is also in a pretty dire spot. You're three and five at that point. And you, you, that, that, I think at that point, you really would start to wonder about the Rams. So they're feeling it too. This is not some game that they don't need. They're not a one and six team that is just playing out the string. They're not a seven and O team that's um, playing dominant the first half of the year and maybe they can afford to lose a game? No. You're just going to have to find a way to show me that you want it more. <clears throat> because based on what we've seen these first eight games, that's the only thing that can help. <laughs> and I'm sorry to sound so down on things right now. And I, I know that sounds like a pretty pessimis pessimistic position to take, but I don't know what other position I can really take right now with the way the team has played over the last month plus, month, what are we talking about now? Month plus a couple of days. So, yeah, it, it's, uh, it's, a, uh, it's a tough one, but it's one that I do believe they have a chance to come up big in, and I'm going to give them that chance. Before we go any further, though, this video is being powered by BetUS, the best sports book and casino on the internet. You can go over there right now. Throw down some wagers on this upcoming Seahawks-Rams game. You can get them for plus 105 on the money line. You can get them for plus one on the spread. So they're home underdogs right now. If you feel like the Seahawks should not be home underdogs right now, you can go bet on them. If you feel like they should be home underdogs, you can go bet on that too. And do it on BetUS. Use promo code YouTube150. Use it gets a 125% deposit bonus on your first deposit up to two thousand dollars and a hundred twenty five percent deposit bonus on your next two deposits up to two thousand dollars so go get the free money check out bet us and get to some gambling okay so back to this game here yeah um look no dk metcalf means little to no optimism from me i'm just going to go ahead and say that right now i'm sorry i wish i could say this offense had progressed to a point where they can produce and be reliable and effective without DK Metcalf, but I watched the game last week, right? <clears throat> like, I watched that game. I saw us not able to threaten down the field because we don't have any speedy receivers that force defenses to respect the deep ball. 
without DK Metcalf out there, we don't have any other players on this team that can do that reliably. It's guys who maybe occasionally they can use their route running savvy and the element of surprise to get open deep, but nobody's scared of Tyler Lockett running a go route anymore, right? If he occasionally manages to catch one, then good for him, but teams will live with that. So, uh, straight up, I don't know how you overcome that. Um, I will say that this Rams defense is nowhere near as good as that Bills defense. This Rams defense missing one of their starting safeties. They're not that good to start with. They don't really have a true nose tackle, so they're pretty light up front. <coughs> Linebackers are very weak. Um, they, they have some of the, le I'd say, lesser, if not among the least at linebacker in the league. So they have clear weaknesses on that side of the ball. But I just don't know if that's going to matter enough. So when, when you look at this Seahawks offense, we know they can't really run the ball, and it doesn't matter who they play. Like every week for the last several games now, I've come out here in pregame video saying, you yeah, should be able to run the ball against this opponent. Any competent rushing game should be able to get it done against this opponent. And you did okay against the Falcons, right? But overall, the last three weeks, you've had very little success running the ball. So I can sit here and say, hey, the Rams don't have a nose tackle. They're playing uh, two, three techs on the interior pretty much all the time. And they don't have Neville Gallimore, so they can't put him out there for those purposes either. But I know that based on what I've seen the last three games, it's not going to matter. We still can't run the ball because our interior offensive line is that incompetent. And I could sit here and say it's going to be a little bit better now that Anthony Bradford gets to play the whole game instead of 75% of it. And I do actually think that's a good change and that's going to make things a little bit better. I mean, I'm happy that's happening. And I don't deny that players in, the, in this league do tend to get a little bit better the more time they get, especially guys like offensive linemen who need to build camaraderie with each other. But is it going to get massively better to the point where they find a way to run the ball without their top receiver keeping defenses honest. <coughs> Excuse me, cough acting up again. Whew. So I, it's hard for me to say, oh, we, that's something we can take advantage of. I don't even know if we could take advantage of it with Metcalf. I, I certainly am not going to sit here and act like we're going to do it when he's not on the field and that safety gets to creep up and he doesn't have to worry about stuff going on behind him because we don't have anybody fast enough to get behind anybody right now maybe Chenault right maybe Chenault but he only plays a few snaps a game he's probably got a very limited understanding of the offense and can only run a handful of plays so looking uh, looking beyond that trying to find something else that this team can do and remember we have no Noah Fant hopefully the lack of Noah Fant will allow us to be a little more balanced with run versus pass but that's only going to matter if the game is competitive, right? Like, that's not going to matter at all if we fall way behind. So is that going to make anything better? I don't really think so. So yeah, I, I just... You guys know, I believe in Gino. I believe in Charles Cross. I believe in our running backs, right? But now I can't even believe in our wide receivers. And I certainly don't believe in that offensive line. And... When you get to that point with the offensive line being what it is, it's just hard to imagine anything else going right when you lose your playmaker that can overcome that. And that's obviously the, uh, the, 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 the shame of all of this. There's a lot going right with this team. Geno Smith is playing very good football. We have very talented receivers when Metcalf is out there, some of the better receivers in the league. We have capable tight ends. We have great running backs. but. Who cares? We can't block for any of them. So we may as well not have those players some of the time, it feels like. And DK makes it passable. When DK's out there, at least they got a chance, right? Because he's somebody who can break a game open with a monster play. He's somebody who can just completely wreck a defensive scheme, completely force defenses to do things they don't want to do. <coughs> so I'd like to sit here and say, hey, I've got this way that I think we can beat the Rams because they have this weakness here when oh, time and time and time again, 
it's shown that it doesn't really matter because we don't execute on even the most basic of levels. So that's the offense, and I'm going to tell you right now, my initial optimism in this game was built around the hope that the offense would be able to bail out the defense. I don't think that's happening now. I don't think this offense is bailing out this defense anymore because, quite simply, not too different from the offense at this point. The only difference is the defense has no excuse. The offense actually has a legitimate excuse because Metcalf is out. But the defense, I also have very, very limited amounts of, of faith in right now to where I can look at this Rams team and say, okay, they're missing two starters on the offensive line. Kind of sounds like Puka won't be able to play. <coughs> um, <coughs> and I would normally be able to go, okay, well, there's stuff we can take advantage of here. We can take advantage of their weakened offensive line, take advantage of the fact that they don't have two top receivers to stress out defenses. And we're going to find a way to be able to stop the run this week because the Rams just do not have the ability to threaten down the field anymore. But, I mean, that's that's clearly not true, right? That's that's clearly not the case because this defense is failing at such a fundamental level that it doesn't matter. None of that matters, right? The Rams are going to go out there. They're going to run the ball a lot. Kyron Williams might get 30, 35 carries. They're going to pound the rock over and over and over again. They're going to try to limit Stafford's opportunities to throw they're going to try to minimize the loss of puka by not throwing the ball that much and is there any reason to believe right now that this seahawks team is going to be able to stop that because the rams have a powerful running game it, maybe it's not one of the best in the league but it is somewhere up there for sure and it is i would generally say not something you would want to deal with when you're having these problems you do not want to be dealing with a powerful rushing attack like this Rams team has when you are failing the way this defense is failing, where they are not... And and by the way, there's actually been a lot of debate on X the last couple days between various people on exactly what the Seahawks defense problem is. But it sure does feel like they don't line up properly. They don't get into formation properly. I've been looking at cutups from all different kinds of people all week. Because there have been a lot of them posted, guys like, you know, Matty, guys like uh, Griff, guys like Corbin. They were all posting this stuff. And the general sense is that the defense just doesn't do anything right on the most fundamental of levels. They don't flow right after the snap. They don't line up right before the snap. They don't, they don't seem to have a basic understanding of how to fill gaps. They don't seem to have a basic understanding of what their assignment is. Like... I don't know if this is worse than any P. Carroll defense that's going to be determined by the end of the year, I think. But it might be more of a schematic mess than any defense that P. Carroll ever put together. And he put together some brutal ones. That 2022 defense was brutal. <coughs> they didn't know what they were doing. So I'd like to sit here and say we can take advantage of some of these things that the Rams are dealing with. But again, how? We can't even do the very basic stuff. We can't line up right. We can't fill gaps right. So, yeah, I'd love to get this Rams team into third and long. You get to third and long against that weakened offensive line that they have right now, no Avila and no uh, Jackson. Now you're talking. Now you're getting pressure on Stafford, who's a quarterback who's getting up there in age, already getting banged up a little bit here and there this season. Now you're talking about challenging a passing attack that might be missing Puka. Okay, now you're talking. But how am I going to believe that the defense I saw last week against the Bills got astronomically better in the last seven days? Because that's what we're looking for here, right? We need everything to be different. Like these guys entered a time portal where like no time was passing outside the bubble and they were able to practice inside that bubble for like a year in five minutes. But that didn't happen. It's the same group of guys. It's the same coaches. They're not going to be able to completely rip everything up and start over with something that's going to work great out of the box in a week. So I, I I have to say that until I actually see it from this defense, I actually see good fundamentals, putting them in good situations. I can't sit here and say I'm going to get it. So, I mean, there, there's nothing left that's going to save you. We talked about the offense and I said, 
I can't trust them to get it done with no Metcalf on the field. And the defense, I can't trust, period, until I actually see some good results. So where does that leave me? <coughs> that leaves me with the unenviable task of having to not even be able to go out on my sword, right? I wanted to. And I was going to, but I can't do it anymore. Like, there's being a little bit hopeful, there's having a little bent toward optimism, and then there's just ignoring all your all the evidence in front of you. And at this point, with DK Metcalf out, I, I don't know how you win this game. Again, it's going to take something beyond everything I just talked about. The scheme, the uh, formations, the um, just the players, the matchups. You're going to have to go out there and just win because you wanted it a little bit more. And you're going to have to do it in front of a home crowd that may not really have your back. Although it is worth noting that the Rams fans don't really travel that much, so it might not be as bad as it's been. But still, regardless, <clears throat> how can I assume that's going to happen? Because I haven't seen a lot of heart. I haven't seen a lot of desire from this team this year. Like... We've seen some games over the last month. Like October, we probably saw multiple games <coughs> where the team looked like they weren't that interested in giving effort. But they weren't interested in being the hungrier team. They weren't interested in being the tougher team. So I don't see it on either side. Maybe we can win the game on special teams. But D. Williams is still here, so that's going to be really hard. So I'm going to go with Rams 27, Seahawks 20. I think we find our way to 20 points. Um, I, I, I think that Geno's playing good enough at quarterback right now to find a way to 20 points, even without Metcalf. He'll, he'll, may, maybe there'll be a drive or two where the run game just works for a little bit. Maybe Grubb will have some stuff ready to go, like he did for that one drive against Buffalo. But... I, I I can't get to 27, and that's where I got the Rams, because this defense, it feels like the good things that happen to them are mostly accidental. Um, It's so easy to play against this defense right now because they don't put you in hard situations ever. Everything's easy. So, sorry guys. I wanted to do it, but I can't. There's I can push it a little bit. I can be a little optimistic. I can't be... I, I can't sell anything about this game to you guys. They're just going to have to go out there and win. And I'll get on here and say, well, I guess I got that one wrong, but I'm really, really happy about it. All right, see you guys later. Go Hawks. Thank you to BetUS for powering the video. Go check them out. Uh, streaming the Huskies game later. Going to probably post one more video between now and then. But uh, yeah, if you don't win this game, you can uh, start thinking about next season, honestly.